Hi, um, tonight's show is a little bit odd for us because normally we do a show and we go, look, these are the bad people, and then we run at them with cameras, obviously with all due impartiality, observing the ITC codes and observing due objectivity as the BBC does. And, and the, tonight's show is really just sort of about, it's a celebration. Because we are, the, the, our country, we have got the most surveillance of any other country. We've got more cameras, CCTV cameras, per capita than any other, uh, any other country. There are over a million CCTV cameras. The thing is, there's a, there's a law called the Data Protection Act. And it, it became law March 2000. And under this law, if any company, any organisations, any agencies, any corporations have information about you, personal data, you can write for it. You enclose 10 quid. There's me, look, I want the information. They've got 40 working days to reply. And they have to do it by law, or you can report them to Data Protection Registrar, rap on the knuckles. Now, just for a laugh, really, <laughs> we thought, well, I've mucked around with a few companies and a few government departments in my time. Let's write to them. Let's see what we get back. The first people to write back to us under the Data Protection Act, enclosing my personal data, Nestle. Fucking book! <laughs> God in heaven, this Nestle, and what's great is they sometimes sort of like, uh, they put, it's real fun reading for me, because they just, he's an utter bastard, I hate him. You know, and that, that kind of stuff. And, but can we just put up the quote that we found in it, which is great. I think that as soon as I can lay hands on proof of his acceptance of Nestle money a few years ago, I will pass it to a suitable source following this latest incident. Clear hypocrisy. <laughs> so I'd just like to say Nestle, if you do ever find that I've taken any money from you, let me know, because I haven't fucking found it. <laughs> Please write in. Then we get in touch with Balfour Beatty, because I'm involved with the Lissu Dam campaign and I disrupted their annual general meeting. We write to them, can we have the personal data? Wrote back, haven't got any, go away. <laughs> Which is a bit funny, because someone sent us this. It's a personal, st strictly private and confidential letter from Lord Weir, the uh, chairman, to Stephen Byers, president of the Board of Trade. And it, basically, they moan about how we disrupted their annual general meeting. <laughs> and in one bit, it said, Mark Thomas, the soi disant comedian. <laughs> and I'm like, he's got me confused with those little cards you find in telephone boxes. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> What's soi disant? It sounds rude. So I looked it up, and it means so-called or self-styled. Ooh. Balfour Beatty have said that the letter from the Swadisant chairman was in fact held in manual form and was never held in an appropriate filing system as defined by the Data Protection Act, but we've sent off the complaint anyway, we'll let you know how we get on. <laughs> then, we wrote off to British Nuclear Fuels, because we've dealt with them a few times, and they wrote back and they sent us a load of stuff. Now, this is a bit confusing because some of the stuff in this pile is stuff that BNFL sent us and some of it is stuff that we already had and BNFL didn't send us. Now, BNFL said the reason for the non-production of the data could be it was deleted or it wasn't held in automated form or it wasn't readily accessible by reference search to my name. <laughs> Complaints going in. Um, then, my favourite, well, this is my favourite... ...environment agency, right? And this is a little internal memo. It's got, Mark Thomas often pulls stunts. Chance he could arrive at a public surgery with radioactive mud, pigeon, seafood, whatever. <laughs> Dressed in comedy productive clothing. <laughs> and with a large Geiger counter. <laughs> Ian Parker suggested he could get calibrated Geiger counters for the surgery, so agency experts could use them to explain the reading and put radioactivity levels into context. Would also be good if we can get an everyday item that's radioactive to show how the Geiger counter makes similar scary noises. E.g. pen, pencil, a watch, Brazil nut, piece of granite from Cornwall. <laughs> now, what's brilliant about this is they're expecting me to arrive and stunt them, and they're going to counter-stunt me. <laughs> I'm going to arrive, and they go, no, I've got a big Geiger counter too, ha-ha! <laughs> and you see, this is fantastic. One day I'm going to burst into a room full of politicians that'll all be dressed as ducks going, ha-ha! <laughs> You're hoisted by your own petard! <laughs> the most interesting stuff, though, was from, from government departments, because we wrote to um, the Department of Environment, Transport and Regions and said, can we have the data? And they wrote back, and uh, they said, unfortunately, the Data Protection Act comes under the Home Office. So they confused the Act with my request from them. And 
rather beautifully, the woman who, who made this monumental error is called Jay Cockup. <laughs> it's actually spelled C-O-C-U-P, so it could be Cockup. So I don't know. But anyway, eventually we get through to the data protection officer called Mr. Fuck Bollocks. And, um, <laughs> no, it could be Foosh Ballou. So we <laughs> eventually get through to him, and they send us this stuff. And you know what it's like? Politicians, if you talk to a politician, ask them a question, they'll, they'll answer any other question but the one you've asked. And you just hope that you knock off something of interest on the way. <laughs> and what happens, you know how they go, freedom of information, absolutely marvellous, landstone, milestone, wonderful thing for Britain. This is what the civil servants in the DETR think of it. It is unfortunate that even when the Freedom of Information Act comes into force, our open government regime will be more closed than many other countries. Thank you very much for that one. We wouldn't have got that one any other way. We thank you. We thank you. So the best, my favourite one actually was the MOD, because we got loads of stuff back from the Ministry of Defence. But all of it was, or not all of it, a large number of it, was um, internal emails of people who work in the Ministry of Defence. There's all this stuff about, have you, did you see the Mark Thomas show? <laughs> oh, fuck, I missed it. Have you got it? Yeah, I think I've got it somewhere. <laughs> Old matey in such and such has got it, has he? Can I borrow it? Yeah. And then I found this one. I have a video of the first two programmes which you can borrow any time. The second is presently being copied by technical services. <laughs> this thing happened, right? There's an event called A30, and what the A30 was, not the road, it was an event that happened on April 30th, was a whole load of people got together in London to, to do a photo. And what it was, it was all campaigners, activists from all different kinds of campaigns, GM protesters, road protesters, free to bet, all these kind of people, got together to make this big, to recreate the front cover of Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club band. And in front, in the flowers, we just had terrorists, question mark. So it was a little, it was a little sort of piece of art, we like to think of it, about the terrorism bill. And as people are leaving, they come up to us and they go, the cops are filming us. We're after your video boys, the boys have been videoing. Are they around and about We haven't had any video boys Are you today? sure? Well, as far as I'm away, we haven't had any out. Hiya. Are you transport police? I am, yeah. <laughs> We've just been told that there's no one filming for the transport police by your chief inspector. Does he know you're doing this? Yeah, he should do. In fact, we're allowed to legally get copies of that film, aren't we? Excuse me, I don't want to get into this discussion about whether we've got copies of the videos, whether you can have copies of videos. Right. OK. I, I, I want to end the discussion. It's not fair to aim any no, comments at all right, well, see, OK? OK. And it's not fair to aim to me at this stage either. So could you, could you okay. just go on your merry way, wherever right. you're going, right. and, and end the discussion now, please? OK, lovely. Is that fair enough? Um, I'm just having a quick think about it because your chief superintendent is presumably above you in rank. Chief inspector. Chief inspector. I don't, what, what rank are you? Inspector. Your inspector. Yeah. He was just telling us that there was no videoing. So you see, there now is a public interest to video because we were told that there weren't, and there is. Yeah, well, I'm not, I'm not prepared to talk to you in front of the camera, to be frank. <laughs> well, doesn't it seem weird that you've been filming people and then you're not prepared to talk to well, us in front I'm of a not, camera? Again, I'm not having you ra have it. me round in rings either. We've just met your video crew. We've just met the British Transport Police video team and you told us there wasn't one. As far as I'm aware, there wasn't. But th they were just around the corner. Did you not look? As far as I was aware, I was briefed there wasn't a video team attached to me today. So someone didn't tell you that? That's quite, ba that's quite bad, isn't it? As far as I'm aware, I wasn't briefed there was a video team with me today. And what's amazing about this was, was um, this is the law. The same legally enforceable information handling standards have been previously applied to those processing personal data on computer now cover CCTV. So that means we can get the footage they took of us. And we wrote in and said, we'd like the footage, please. <laughs> 10 quid, here you go. Can you send it back to us? So wrote into the local station, and this is what they sent back. I'm Mark Thomas, pleased to meet you. How are you doing, Mark? I'm all right. What I was wondering what is, you, what am I? Who are you with? What do you mean, who am I with? I'm a comedian. Oh, you? Yeah. Then we found out there's a thing called Securex, which is an exhibition of security, uh, people who sell security equipment, right, and loads of CCTV there. And we did a bit of research before going down to Securex, and we found out that of something like just over 200 companies that are exhibiting there, something like 127 companies had failed to register with the data protection <laughs> registrar.
haven't registered under the Data Protection Act. Uh huh. Did you know that? Yes. Yes, we're so, aware of all the data protection. So, so, so if you haven't if you haven't registered, you're in uh -huh. breach of the law. Yes. It was just, I, I don't know whether you're aware of this, but you're not registered under the Data Protection Act. Oh, we're not? No, you're not. You haven't registered yet. Who's your designated person to store your site? He's not here yet. <laughs> no, Data Protection Act is very important. There's an internet cafe upstairs. Yeah. And what they do is you can get online and you can register. Yes, yes. And you can actually register your company there okay. and then. Do you want yeah. to come up and do it? Uh, it's just going to be a bit awkward because obviously I've got customers here. Well, I, I appreciate that, but it's just that you're in breach of the law at the moment. Yeah, but obviously I've got customers here, so it's going to be awkward going. No, and I, I know that, but you see, the law is it's the just... law. There's a company over there that I haven't registered with the Data Protection Act. It's a lot of kind of like being a bit arsy, I believe, is the vernacular. All right, you might just drop by their stand. Thank you very much for your help. Do appreciate that. As I say, keep my name out of it because I'm not a grass, all right? I've been asked to stop filming. Why? Who's, who asked you to stop filming? Hi, how are you, Hi, how are you doing? I'm well, going this way. No, we, we, how can you ask us to stop filming? It's a bit silly asking us not to stop filming. I just want to check what you're doing. That's at a CCTV. Oh, it's not a CCTV, it's a security show. There it's is a security, security show. show. There's a huge amount of CCTV, though, here, isn't there? Because that's part of security. So it's a bit sort of silly when everyone else is filming to tell us to stop filming. It is gonna, it's, you're not going to be happy with me, actually. It's just, that, it's just that the exchange that just took place between us, you know, they said stop filming. Yeah, they people, are, also, people say that a lot on your programme. Yeah, they do. That. They do. But unfortunately, it's captured on your... Thing, so can we put in a, a request for that? Yeah, keep them coming. <laughs> the result of you bringing to our attention, we're doing everything we can to make sure that hopefully by the end of today or by tomorrow, everyone within these halls is complying with the law. We suddenly start thinking, how can we use this stuff? Right? How can we get hold of this? Right? What can we do? Now, the DTI were dragging their feet on our data protection, so I thought, we'll give them a visual aid memoir. Oh yeah, I've just got a letter to hand in. Can what? I get through? Thank you. Camera crew can't come in though. No. CCTV camera in the corner, went up, held up the board. Hello, Mark Thomas here, can I have my personal data please? Stood there for a bit, then went and said, there's my protection request, thanks very much. See you later, I expect the footage in the post. And I do believe we can show that footage. <laughs> And then we started thinking, where else can we use this? Because you think of the... <laughs> rail track, how many, you know, oh, we can't run any trains because we've got the wrong sort of management on the track, I can't do anything. <laughs> and we thought, you know, now if you arrive late for, for work and they say, you know, look, what, your boss goes, why are you late? And you say, I was delayed by rail track. And they say, well, what, what do you mean, prove it? <laughs> Give me a tenner. <laughs> you can go and get the video footage of you being late. And I do believe that we can show some footage. <laughs> now, now you know, right, that you can get this CCTV footage, you can go and make movies. <laughs> you can go and do, in fact, we're having a competition. So send in any CCTV stuff you get, a filmed of you, we're after the most creative, you can do whatever you like on this, remember? <laughs> whatever you think is reasonable. And we're gonna have it, well, Jonathan Ross has said he'll judge it for us, and we're gonna have an award ceremony later on in the year, so please send it into Vera. Um, the weird stuff, you know that CCTV, that footage is fucking weird because it, you always look like a criminal on it. Do you know what I mean? No matter, because it's all guilty. You just look like a criminal. They can film the Pope doing communion and he'd look like he was nicking something out of people's mouths. <laughs> But anyway, we, we, um, we thought we're having a bit of a laugh with this, we're, we're enjoying this. And so we went down to Newham, because Newham Council have got a system called Mandrake. And the Mandrake system is a software system which is attached to the CCTV cameras. In this system, they have got a program called Facial Mapping. So, if you're a naughty boy and they see, they've programmed in your features into this computer, and you appear on their cameras, on the CCTV cameras, a little ring, a little red ring goes off around your head. So we thought, we'll go down there, right, and we'll just see how good it is, right? So we went down with, with some Morris dancers. Because <laughs> we thought, you know, Playfair, we'll give them a good visual target. Yeah. 
Do we reckon we're in the camera? Yeah. I reckon we're being covered. Okay, that would be good. Hey! How you doing? Yeah, Alright then, Mark Thomas, Channel Sorry. 4. Please to meet you. Do you want to go? Uh, no, I don't. You can ever go. <laughs> They'll take you through. To be fair, there's too many cameras that I like inside. Well, what, there or there? Everywhere. <laughs> Oh, sorry, I should, I should point out, sorry about this. It's just we saw McDonald's there. <laughs> and you know what it's like. A lot of these fast food chains say no, but they really mean yes, Your Honour. Do you want to do a little Morris? Little Morris little and I'll just have a little... Hiya, <laughs> oh, yeah. how you doing? I'm Mark Thomas from Channel 4, we're just filming outside. Right. I hope you don't mind. What we're going to do is we're just putting in a little request to you. We're just going to fill in the form and then hand it in. Do you mind going upstairs and taking a... Uh, okay, we'll go, we'll go upstairs, that's absolutely fine. Thank you very much. We, we then sort of like followed through. We got McDonald's. McDonald's sent... Can we just show a bit of the McDonald's one? Because this is what they sent through. <laughs> <laughs> then we, we phoned up Newham and I said, how's it going? with the data protection request. And the woman said, the data protection officer said, well, no, where? I said, put in a data protection request, six Morris dancers, me. We came round to the town hall, we danced in the little portico there for you. We gave in all the photos, everything, gave it in. She said, I don't, no, no, not had it. I said, what? She said, not had it. So I said, have another look, will you? So she went and had another look. Then we got this letter. This is from Newham Council. They said, it has not been possible for us to extrapolate your images from those of unknown third parties. In view of that, we're unable to release the video footage, which is against the Data Protection Act. <laughs> and also, pretty poor show if you've spent two million quid on CCTV. And you're having problems going, no, which one's the criminal, which one's the Morris dancer? I don't quite know. <laughs> this means that criminals now, if they want to get away with it in Newham, just dress up as a Morris dancer, they'll never fucking spot you. <laughs> hiddly oidy, give me your money, you're fucking dead if you don't. Hiddly oidy. <laughs> So anyway, we, we, we then we decided, well, you know, the cops are doing masses of videoing. So we thought, how would they like it if, they, if we treated them like us? So we, went, we found out there's some mates of ours, right, who filmed stuff all over the world uh, from undercurrents, from indie media. And they turned up and th we found out that the Met Police first 11 football team was playing in North London, North of London. <laughs> And we slowly allowed 25 video activists slowly to assemble on the touchline during a very important league game. You join us here this afternoon as we watch the Met first play Bovington United here in an important league playoff here. The Mets coming up here, Bovington looking to be the copper stoppers. Cops in possession, cops in possession, as so frequently is the case. And it's out for a throw in for the cops. It looks like number three coming in. But it looks like Bob's been chopped. One of the Bovington players has been chopped down. It looks quite nasty from the look of it. There should be some kind of inquiry here. Possibly uh, an external inquiry rather than an internal inquiry because we all know the problems with the internal inquiries. Supermet, the ancient William 11 here. Taking a bit of a breather on this wet day up here in Bushy with a few supporters, a couple of relatives, informers, that kind of thing on the touchline. Very good. And there he's, he's walking, that's fantastic. Obviously a blow to the cops, but he is walking. <laughs> Sorry, who's that there? You just turn it off, it's annoying. Sorry about that. So we've got permission to film up here. Have you? Well, can you turn the sound down? It's too loud, it's off putting. Yeah. Sorry about that. It's just that we, we have got permission from the police. Shit. What you've got? Turn it down. Sorry, are you from the Met Police? I am, yeah. Turn it down. It's too loud. So is there a legal problem?
Oh, it's too loud, isn't it? I mean, would you get this in a Premier game? Would you? <laughs> oh, what? Shane, were there all trespassers on here? They're not. They'll have them off at half time. Don't bother me at all. Let's face it, we're just going to get an injunction so they can't show The final thing that we, we did was um, we got a phone call. Got a phone call and somebody phoned up and said, oh, hello, I'm, I'm from the Save Dagenham plant campaign. I said, oh, hello. And they said, uh, listen, we're going on to Ford at the engine plant in Dagenham. And, I, and it's their property, but we've been handing out leaflets there. People have been selling stuff, papers and all that for 25 years. And because there's a strike ballot coming up, they've been threatening us with physical assault. Could you help us? And I said, well, we're doing a programme about CCTV. I don't know if we can fit it in. They said, I'll tell you what, come along, right? You sit in the car in the car park, film us, we'll go out there, hand out the leaflets as normal, and then whatever happens, you've, you've captured it on film, and then we'll put in a CCTV request from Ford, because they've got loads of CCTV around there, and see if they give us the footage. I'm a trade union member, don't you worry These about that. These people are good trade union members. Yeah, unlike, unlike you. you. There you are. Look at you. You're aggressive, aren't you? Look at you. What kind of... You ain't going to have none to give out soon, are you? What sort of trade union member do you think you are you doing that? You ain't going to have none to give out soon. I'll tell you what, you're such a wanker, aren't you? I know. You don't know what and you're going and on And you're about. not. You're such and a you're thick not. cunt. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you really are. The only thing is you can't intimidate me. You think you're such a big tough man, because you're there, you think oh, you've ruled the roost. i tell you what, believe it or not, if I weren't on full motor company property, yeah, I'd put you, you through the fucking pavement. Would you really? Yeah. Well. This is called reasonable force. That's, not, that's unreasonable force. If you force. want to fucking deck you, I'll fucking deck you. Yeah? You hear? Yeah? That's not reasonable force, is it? No, I will move. So we applied to Ford for the CCTV footage, obviously it doesn't have sound, but we will get the footage. And they sent us a copy with lots of shots of the car park. And Ford's have written to us and told us that our film may be helpful. They've assured us they are investigating and they will take the appropriate action. I know people say, you know, well, CCTV actually solves a lot of crime and all of that. And, you know, in the case of someone like Damon Taylor, I really fucking hope it does. But the point being is there's no Home Office official report on it. They haven't assessed it, whether it's cost effective. They haven't assessed whether it displaces crime. They haven't assessed whether it stops crime. And frankly, you know, the biggest cause of crime in this country is poverty. The same as any other country. And you can cover the whole of this country. You can cover the entire country with CCTV cameras. And all that will happen is you'll get blokes turning up in pubs going, do you want to buy a camera? <laughs> but you know that, you know I said we got stuff from the MOD? and they sent us loads of stuff. A few series ago, we did a flight over Menwith Hill listening station, <laughs> a big radar, and we did it in a balloon, and they sent us a CD-ROM. Only a couple of days till the next show. Mark's back with more product on Wednesday at 11.15. And don't forget he'll be answering your questions in a few minutes at channel4.com forward slash talk. Can I get a copy of the film? Of this film? Th that you took, yeah. Definitely not. <laughs>